Hey everybody, Dave here. How are y'all doing tonight, tomorrow, the middle of next week, the second Tuesday of next month? That's actually a real thing, which is not the joke I was going for, but oh well. Here I am, hope you're having a good time, and with me is, as always, Greg the Badger Piper. How are you doing tonight, Greg? I'm doing pretty well tonight, uh, now that my uh, fatherly duties are done for the day. How are you doing? little feeling of deja vu you know just because we did this like just a couple of minutes ago but you know things happen but what we were talking about just before i realized i forgot to hit the recording button is we were talking about the fact that my kid is in school remotely because we don't have a choice fun 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 it's just the worst it's just the worst to get three other kids and i was just thanking god that you know what at this time that we're both home right now because I mean, what would you do? You got a baby, you got a toddler, and you got one that's going to school next year. Maybe. We'll see. Um, I just don't know how we, how one person would, met, would juggle all that. It's a challenge. It, it really is. I mean, I, I'm just doing basic fatherly duties, and my whole day is just eating up. You've just, you know, oh, yeah, sitting yeah. in the chair holding him and occasionally doing stuff with them. So I can't even imagine juggling uh, trying to teach uh, children yeah I'm not a teacher I don't have the patience for it just because my initials are DR doesn't mean I'm an actual doctor I just play one on the internet mm -hmm. okay get the music going there alright only a minute 48 this time As you might recall, last time I forgot to, uh, for a whole 10 minutes. You guys didn't notice because I fixed it in post. But anyway, tonight we're, we're going just... to be going into The Mandalorian. Episode 7. Yes, yeah, so we're finally uh, getting back to uh, the show. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think I'm glad that we didn't uh, watch episode seven before the break and record an episode and leave the, the last part oh yeah yeah i guess that would have just been a month a month off would have just been too long to leave between seven and eight since it's basically cliffhanger right uh but yeah no it was a it's good to get back into the groove and uh actually it's been so long i had to actually search uh Disney Plus for The Mandalorian because uh, we've been watching kind of other things in its place. But uh, finally found it and uh, I had watched it in December but uh, watched it again tonight for some just a refresher just to refresh my mind. But uh, yeah, no, the episode is uh, The Reckoning. But uh, before we hop into the episode, uh, what are you smoking tonight? Well, what I'm attempting to smoke tonight is uh, some Dunhill 965 in the uh, Charlestown cobbler that you sent me from, that you got me at Chicago a couple years back. Oh, nice. Very good. Very good choice. And I recognize the pipe you're smoking. Mm-hmm. It is a Nate Rose. Uh, it is a combination of uh, a Lumberman and uh, a Dublin, which we dubbed uh, the Willow's Pipe. And uh, inside I am smoking uh, McConnell's uh, Honeydew Flake. Well, not a flake, but Honeydew mixture. And uh, it's actually going through it quite quickly faster than I expected, so uh, I will most likely have to switch to my uh, pipe with uh, Baby Flake. Nice. By McBaron. Can't go wrong with a Navy Flake. I haven't planned that far ahead. Last time, I mean, I had the same pipe all the way through, so that was 45 minutes, so we should be... Uh... I should just be sailing, but I've got a lot of tobacco within reach, so mm -hmm. it'll be all right. Cool. 
good so stuff. So we should dive right on in here. Gonna just uh, pull up the. Unless you've already got it. Do you have the description up on IMDb or whatever you call that thing? Yes. Yeah, so are you ready for it? Go nuts. Save me looking for it. An old contact extends an invitation for the Mandalorian to make peace with his enemies. Wow. Again, they, they, they do the art of understatement. I was expecting more. Well, you know how they, uh, how all the trailers these days basically show the entire movie in one trailer. This is like the opposite. Oh, fun aside, just uh, just quickly, I feel like I'm going to veer off on a few rabbit trails today, but uh, I basically did that too. I made a little video that I put out on my personal channel, and uh, just for fun, I shortened it up and threw it out on TikTok. And basically showed all the good parts of the of the video in thir like a minute. I pulled mm -hmm. off a movie trailer. That thing has been watched. Well, I put it up, and by by twenty four hours later, it had been viewed four hundred and sixty eight times. Hmm. So you're going. I didn't do anything special. I just threw it up there because, well, that's where you put short stuff. Right. Basically, all it is is me stuffing a piece of paper in uh, in a chest on a uh, on a pyramid of TNT and blowing it up. <laughs> That's fine. There's a story behind that, which I can tell you later, but it's not for here. <laughs> anyway, so the reckoning. Yes, Carl Weathers' character, something something Griff. Um. Damn, I just heard his name because I was watching the uh, uh, yesterday the Car Carwell the Weathers character. A was, grief Karga. Grief, grief. That's it. <laughs> Griff. Uh, I had Back to I, the Future I, flying in there for a second. I only know um, <laughs> if I'm being honest. If I didn't have IMDb open, I'd only know the Mandalorian, Baby Yoda, <laughs> which I know is. He has a, a name, but that's coming up in the next season. Um, but I can't tell you the name. Uh, and uh, Cara Dune and, and Quill. Everyone else is kind of uh, not as uh, sticking. It's not sticking with me in yeah, my mind. Yeah. Aside from like the, the ones you just mentioned, they've basically been the main characters of this season anyway. Mm -hmm. Along with IG-88. Yeah, no, for sure. And, uh, you know, it's funny you say that because it, it definitely gives it this season finale vibe. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not a, a very big s season, but uh, I, I feel like all the pieces are coming together. You know, we have a couple episode om omissions like um, the Gunslinger and uh, the Prison Escape episode. I don't think we really have any returning characters from either of those for this two-parter no uh, but overall like yeah it's like a if if you're a friend of the mandalorian you know you show up in, in one of these two episodes except yeah with the exception of the hanger a lady in the hanger for the gunslinger yep but yeah that was an interesting little twist that they had going on there Mando, come back. We're we're gonna we're gonna fix this all up for you. Mm-hmm. You no, know, it starts off very intriguing, and uh, you know, essentially, you know, it's the promise of uh, not having to be on the run anymore. But you always, but you know that there's things are never as simple as they are made to appear. No, never. And not just because this is Star Wars, it's just the it's just the type of uh, show that this is. It's hearkening to like one of the. <sighs> I have a show in mind where this was. The... There was always a twist to it, and I can't remember the name of it now. It was fitting though. Unfortunately, I, yeah. I can't use it. 
Well, most uh, most TV shows, they try to do the whole, um, you know, promise you one thing, but you know that it's everything's going to go sideways at some point. Um, although I like how they handled that in this episode. Yeah, it was so, very well done. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and really this is, it, it's interesting too, because a lot of the episodes, it, it's very sparse in terms of the casting. Like normally, you know, you just have the really essential people. So it's unique to have so many people like on the Mandalorian ship. And, you know, you have a uh, Cara Dune who, it's definitely understandable, and it's understandable why he would be bring both Kara and uh, Quill all along for this. And uh, as they both kind of have the, the skills that he needs, he knows he can trust uh, Kara in a fight, and he knows that Quill is a, a good dude that will, uh, you know, is just very knowledgeable. Mm-hmm. And so definitely someone that you want to, uh, on your team, especially since he was offered a, a spot on the ship, you know, pretty early on into the series. Definitely. But, uh, oh, and what I, I like too is the fact that both Kara and Quill were on different sides of the Rebel and Imperial uh, War. And uh, although with Quill, you find out that, you know, he was kind of put there against his will. Yeah. And, Kara seems to hold that against him, but there's no animosity on Quill's side. Yeah, no, and he, he's fine with it because once the war was over, he basically wanted to retire to wherever he was, wherever his little planetoid was there, and have a peaceful life and not have anything to do with anything, mm-hmm. except for you know helping the odd stranger and you know coming on a fun little adventure here. Yeah. Although I do like the newly repurposed uh, IG-11. Yes, now he's a nurse droid. Mm-hmm. Would you like tea? And it makes sense that Quill would uh, find him and repurpose him. I mean, mm-hmm. he's living out there on basically a, ta- uh, basically a Tatooine-like planet, if not on Tatooine itself. And uh, you're out there on your own. Like, if you find a droid that you can rebuild, why wouldn't you? Mm hmm. Because if you don't take it, the Jawas will. Mm hmm. So, yeah, we, he's doing that. And uh, Mando stops by, recruits him, mm-hmm. heads off to the planet where he left uh, Cara Doom, stops by and recruits her. In the meantime, uh, Baby Yoda takes uh, the ship for a little cruise for a little <laughs> for a little moment when it's just Mando and Kara, and uh, takes control of the ship. And Mando has to jump in there and get him away from the controls. Oh, that's hilarious! That was hilarious. I like that. Uh, I'm sure they had fun coming up with different scenarios for this to happen, but I like the random little things that uh, Baby Yoda does to get into trouble. Oh, yeah. Um, and it feels, you know, understandable too. Like, it, it's it's not all, like, plot plot, um, you, know, driv- you know, driven by the plot, but rather uh, just part of you know, where, where it happens, it makes sense. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I yeah. mean, the only plot point that that's keeping up is that this is a 50-year-old baby. And that's really all it's mm-hmm. keeping up. It, they're just playing the, playing the kid like he's, like, you know, around my middle son's age. Or my, not my middle son, my youngest son's age. Around, I'd say, two-ish. Mm-hmm. Maybe a little bit younger he's, than that. 18 yeah. months. And he's, and he's curious. Mm-hmm. Although he does try to strangle Kara just because he thinks that she's a threat at some point. 
Yeah. And we will get in season two, because I've already watched it, looking forward to rewatching it again. The uh, We do get some explanation as to why he flips back and forth between light side and dark side powers, so that's something mm. to look forward to. Oh, nice. Uh, I do look forward to that. So, yeah, then they take the Razor Crest and they're off to... Uh, can't remember the name of the planet. I really should make start making notes for these things instead of not going in like I'm not scripted. A planet where basically everything pretty much where it started and where it mm-hmm. shall end. The season anyway. Mm-hmm. It comes full circle. Yeah, which is nice. Mm-hmm. And I like too when they uh head off, they're on the what are the monsters again that they're they're riding oh you would ask me that typically I would know I don't I, I don't want to say anything because I I, yeah. I know they're, I'm gonna get it wrong they're, they're mounts essentially yeah lizard um, lizard horses mm-hmm. two-legged lizard horses and seeing the the, the trio of them ride off uh, into the sunset it uh, you know again the western motifs really strong and uh, it looks really nice in, in a sci-fi setting mm-hmm. it's really great yeah now it, it's interesting to see the you know the reunion of uh, grief Karga because you know at, at first you know not to something's wrong and not to trust him but I, I think this is kind of where they I mean before with the Mandalorian like he was like in the beginning of the season he wasn't really viewed as like necessarily evil you know he was just the guild leader you had a, a good rapport with the Mandalorian it, things only changed because the Mandalorian, you know, went back on on everything, and so he's just merely keeping up with his business, you know, for the most part. Uh, but we get to see, you know, different sides of him, like like when he first sees uh, Baby Yoda for himself, and. Uh, which, you know, at first, you know, we don't know if, whether he's just kind of like play acting or not. But uh, thanks to the little uh, incident with the around the campfire that evening, it actually gives him a, a change of heart. Once uh, he realizes that, you know, he's been saved by, by them and uh, therefore he feels obliged to help them. And so he ends up turning on the two guild members that he had brought with to take out uh, Mando and, and his crew and, and ends up joining them. Yes, he does. For the mission. And they need another person when they're we're getting down to that mission, how that mission's going. But yeah. there's an interesting little thing about uh, that particular scene that you're talking about. Because this is where we see Grogu force heal um, Griff's arm, Grief's arm. Now, this episode came out, like, was released days after the release of one of the, I can't remember which one, one of the Star Wars trilogy, the new one. And that was the episode first. Episode 9. Was it episode 9? Was it the last one? Yeah, it was episode 9. Because that's the one where we, where we actually see force healing for the first time. Mm-hmm. So it was brought into canon only days before this episode aired. Or maybe a week, but y- you get you get the point. This mm-hmm. this was a brand, this is a brand new ability that we'd only just seen if you went into to see Star Wars uh, the, La- the Last Jedi. Uh, Rise of Skywalker. Rise of Skywalker. I am all over the place tonight. Wow. <laughs> it's been a lot. Well, 2020 was a long year. 
We're only 21 days into 2021, and it's already been a long year here. Gotcha. Well, that's mostly just due to the forced homeschooling. Mm -hmm. Mostly. But yeah, like that that that's a cool thing about uh about this whole thing. It, you see the force powers for the first time and then you see it again just a few days later like boom. Yes, this is a thing. Right. And I know it's a controversial topic with some people because I mean it's difficult to I mean it it, yeah, it's difficult to say like because with something big like that it, it's hard to be like well you know why wasn't it used at this point or this point in, in previous stuff and you know I don't necessarily know if there's really ever going to be an adequate explanation for that stuff it's more of just a hey this is a new thing we added uh, but it really isn't a new thing they added it it was something they were they're they're like, as we all know, when Disney took over Star Wars, they wiped out the canon from uh, all the expanded universe and made it Legends. What uh, Favreau and Filoni are trying to do is bring some of the stuff back that fans appreciated and liked from the Legends and reinstate it in canon through the, through the Disney canon. The Force healing ability um, was one of those uh, things that was canon before, but Disney wiped it out. And... There were only select Jedi healers that could do that, mm -hmm. so it's not not a common ability. And Grogu and Ray both share it. That makes sense that uh, Grogu would be able to. Mm -hmm. You, know, I would imagine that Yoda would it would have been able to. He just, you know, he never really needed to was in a position where he needed to use it. Right. I will say too, I, I liked the scene at the campfire when like the um, flying monsters came in. Mm -hmm. I thought that brought a, a nice a lot amount of like tension. Kind of reminded me a little bit of like Jurassic Park, or at least um, Jurassic World, the the reboot movie, because there was uh, something kind of similar to that at one point in the movie. Um. But, uh, yeah, so, uh, we get Grief Karga, you know, basically, you know, coming to the light side and, and working with, uh, working with the crew and, uh, help, trying to help the Mandalorian and, uh, you know, the Baby Yoda escape. Yep, so it's at this point where they come up with their plan. Cara Dune and... Mando and Grief are going to go into town with the empty carriage and they send Quill back to the Razor Crest where IG-88 is minding the ship to keep Grogu as he is known and I would assume that most people who are listening to this by now have already watched season 2 anyway so I don't think there's any spoilers there by letting his name out yeah um to keep him safe and they they're walking in you know they're expecting you know, a small amount of stormtroopers they get in there get to the cafe and there's a lot more stormtroopers than they're expecting like basically a battalion's worth if I, if I made yes. my count right yeah not just uh, the, you're the normal ones but uh, some uh, scary ones in all black yes the dark troopers as it were or at mm -hmm. least our first uh, indication that we might be getting some dark trooper action oh yeah it uh, you know ends up with a classic kind of shootout scenario where the heroes are trapped and they're going to have to fight their way out but uh, once they realize that uh, baby Yoda isn't with them and Quill left with the baby Yoda, but uh, 
Now, no matter how fast he can run at, on his uh, his blurg, on his blurg, it's just not fast enough to outrun um, speeder bikes. And the last shot you see is uh, one of the stormtroopers snatching uh, Grogu up and poor dying Quill lying on the ground. Which is devastating because you know, well, you know, sad because he's a, a fun character. Just a, mm -hmm. you know, we didn't get to spend too much time with him overall with the series, but you know, since it's especially been kind of Mando Mandalorians and uh, Grogu's story, but uh, really he's like the first kind of ally character that uh, the Mandalorian meets and I mean but if a character is going to die it makes sense that it's him in terms of uh, like out of uh, the Mandalorian and his allies but uh, still it's, it's kind of bummer because uh, kind of a bummer because he's pretty likable He was a very likable character, and it's always sad to see a character die, but you can't keep everybody. I mean... Right. You and I both know that's going, hearkening back to The Flash, which was our roots in doing this kind of type of podcast. They keep all their characters, and that gives you a bloated roster. Because, I mean, how many times have we been sitting there going, and... Caitlin Snow, not in this episode. Mm -hmm. Right. So, I appreciate where Favreau and Filoni are coming with, okay, we gotta have people die. We just can't keep everybody. Plus, when you look at, you know, with uh, the original trilogy, Obi-Wan dies in the first movie. Uh, in... Uh, uh, Phantom Menace, Qui-Gon dies. It, it makes sense to have a character die at the end of the first season or movie. He's in that mentor kind of role, and the mentors mm -hmm. usually die around this point. Absolutely. Which is the reason why you don't become a mentor or a teacher. Yeah, and it's also this episode where we get our first glimpse of the brains behind everything that's been going on in season one here. Yes. Right at the end, we get introduced to Moth Gideon. Yes. Which, uh, I I'm not sure how to say the, the actor's name, but, uh, he gets around a lot. He, I've seen him in quite a few things. But he's quite talented, but I know like he's been in stuff like uh, Breaking Bad, Community, uh, all sorts of stuff. He's a great actor, so it's a, he's a welcome addition to, uh, to this cast. I am pretty sure I know how to pronounce his name. I'm just going to look it up really quick. Because I, I want to say who I think it is. Giancarlo Esposito. Yeah, I'm, I just need to see it. Mm -hmm. Sure. But you did pronounce his last name right. It is Esposito. I know that. Here we go. Ah, Jean, uh, Giancarlo Expos Exposito. Esposito. I knew as soon as I see it, I, I'd be able to pronounce it because I've heard it enough. Mm. Cargo. Cargo. Okay. Something I do find a little bit interesting which I was just reminded of by quickly looking at IMBD there, is the person who 
body acted or was present in the costume for Quill was actually a woman. Yeah, I saw that. That was a uh... Kind of interesting. You never would have assumed that. No, not at all. I didn't actually know that myself until I was watching uh, uh, Star Wars Gallery making of Mandalorian Season 2. I found that out yesterday. Mm. Yeah, overall, uh, I think this was a, a really solid episode. Uh I'm excited to check out the next one. Oh, me too. I mean, they left it on a great cliffhanger. You know, you're surrounded in a cafe or in a saloon, ready for a shootout and black screen. Right. Missing everything everything there except for the to be continued. Mm-hmm. That's a good cliffhanger. And certainly well worth the wait. Because from my Absolutely. previous experience watching it already, it was a great episode. I'm looking forward to rewatching the rewatching that the, that episode this week. Same here. So, uh, I think that's pretty much all my thoughts uh, for the episode. How about you? Me too. I mean, it was a great episode. There's really not much to say about it from my standpoint. Either if you want a more detailed explanation as to how things go and something a little bit more focused on the production side of things, go out and find the guys, the podcast, uh, Star Wars TV Talk. That's, That's their total focus. They focus on all Star Wars and... They're just right on the ball. So if you want a little bit more detail, go listen to them. I do. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, overall, yeah. Uh, Looking forward to to wrapping it up and then getting into season two. (sighs) This works out great for you. I mean, you don't actually have to wait to get into season two. It's already out and you can just go right into it. Right. Yeah, there's a... Uh, I find that's uh, the problem when I get a watch a show that is still running and you binge uh, everything up until and and then get caught up and then realize that uh, you're gonna have to watch the rest of the episodes uh, along with everybody else uh, at their at the normal speed. Yeah, I heard something um, about that too. Um because Mandalorian season two has already been out and is over. Mandalorian season three is not coming in at the end of the year this year. It's coming in out in 2022. There's a reason for that, but I can't get into it right now because if you have, there's still a possibility that you haven't seen that those episodes yet because they've only been, they were only just over like a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure there are still some people out there that uh, haven't seen all of the episodes yet, and we'll cover that when we get to it. But I know there is a reason for it. I mean, what do you think they'll rename the show to since the Mandalorian died? I don't know. Star Wars The Grogu Chronicles, maybe? The Young Grogu Chronicles. Yeah, they pulled off some really Indiana Jones-esque type stuff in Season 2, so it would make sense. Mm -hmm. The the Young Grogu Chronicles to keep the parallel going. Yeah. Sounds good. But Uh. with that all being said, since we really don't have anything else to say, we'll just sign her off here so if you want to follow us throughout the week I am now at well it's the same account I just renamed it slightly it's Dr. Alien 201 and that's my Instagram now and my Twitch and everything so if you want to find me I'm Dr. Alien partially because I've been tired of being called Dr. Allen because I'm not a doctor and honestly I was uh, responding to something uh, another streamer I watch 
something out there and he responded back and he mispronounced it as Dr. Alien. You know, I'm sorry, Dr. Allen. But then again, you should be called Dr. Alien. That'd be, that's just cooler. And I thought about it and going, you know what? He's right. I'm changing it. Greg, where can they find you? Ah, uh, you can find me at the underscore Badger Piper on Twitter and the Badger Piper on Instagram, uh, where you can see my occasional posts here and there. Um, I also have a pipe blog, uh, the Badger Piper dot WordPress dot com, and uh, another one that's chronicling my uh, attempts to learn how to play the bagpipes at the Piper's Quest dot WordPress dot com. And of course, you can see us right here on the YouTube. And if you want to just give us a quick email, you can always shoot us one at reverseflashtime at gmail.com. Or send us a Twitter DM or oh, yeah. leave Our a comment in, uh, on uh, YouTube. And you know any sort of feedback we get, we'll definitely read back and respond to. Absolutely. But with that, everybody, thanks for watching, listening, have yourself some good smokes. Good night.